Well, look, welcome back to our TEA 20 in-frame engine overhaul. In this video, we're just going to do the video on removing the cylinder head. We won't go any further. We're just trying to keep short, quick videos so you can follow along easily. And we're around the right-hand side of the tractor this time. We did the compression test on the other side and all that told us was that it's worn out and we knew that. So when I got the tractor, this has never been hooked up. So I've undone the hose clamp up on the air cleaner. And we start by taking that pipe off. That comes out of the way. Now, I like to pull your carburetor off now. You don't really need to. You, you do have to undo the fittings and the rod from the governor and the choke and that, but I like to pull it off so if this manifold drops or something like that, you don't wreck a whole carby. You don't ruin the whole thing. So we'll start off by loosening the fuel pipe. This is the pipe that comes from the fuel tank around. I don't know how many times this has been off, but boy, look at the rounded corners on there. The I'll bring one in from underneath if I can. Oh, yeah, that's got it. That fitting's loose in there. But anyway, that's neither here nor there, really. Now, we have a rod that comes from the governor back, and when we move the throttle, you can just see this rod here move. Can you see that? Yes, you can. And on this one, there should be a, there is a bracket here that holds the wires out of the way from either touching the manifold or rubbing on the, on the governor rod here. But it's just hanging there. There's no, that's the bracket. It would normally hang up in here, I believe, and keep everything out of the way. The, there's a nut missing here and as you can see through this manifold here that's all been mucked around with at some stage so I don't know when it was mucked with but anyway it's it's been mucked with so there's a little split pin round in behind here and this is this is the choke rod so whoever's put that in, you can see the big long tails. I don't know if you can see that or not. Big long tails left on it. Um, not a way to do it really, but anyway, that's all right. We'll do it right when we put it together. So there's the choke rod off the back of the carb. Now the governor rod here. Same thing there, it's got a split pin all curled one way by the feel of it. I can't actually see what I'm doing here. But I will try and get in and back around. There's normally a pin at the front here too, but in this instance, they've put a nut and a bolt. I might be able to lift you over to see that that's in there this bloke that should normally have a pin and in this instance it doesn't so we'll get this camera back where it should be sorry about that i was just showing you things and look i'll sneak off for a second i'll get a set of side cutters and see if i can extract that pin it's all been doubled up. There we go. Once again. Anyway. People do that. So we've taken the fuel line off. We've taken the throttle rod off. And we've taken the choke off. Should be time now to pop the carb out of the way. We 
got to remember these tractors there. Um, well, this is 1954. So it's what, 56 years old. 66 years old, I'm sorry. And a lot of people have probably had a crack at it in that time, I'd say. This may have been the first tractor on a farm that took over from the horses 70 years ago. Now this is a harping spanner fits these carb bolts. I'm just trying to support the carb. The carb is a Zenith 24T-2. There's a lot of them on these little tractors. Later on they went to a Zenith 28G, but it looks different to this completely. Same carb as on the 35. I don't know when they changed them over. There's the carb off. The fellow I bought it off said he'd put a kit through the carb, so... I can see a new... He's got that butterfly back to front. Anyway, doesn't matter. <laughs> Must have brought it in from the other way. All right, we'll pop that over there. I'll put the bolts in there. Now, this manifold, there's a breather comes through here. These are often carboned up and not doing any good. Now, I think a three-quarter spanner up here, is it? No, it's not, means. I think it's 13, 16. We can undo this. Now there's often a little little jiggly check valve on here. And I'll bring that in and show you. See the, the little valve there? That's nice and free. Sometimes they're jammed right up. That's good. Everything's going into a pot. Now this fitting here, well, I was going to say if we get this we'll go and get a lotto ticket. So we, I'd better stop video and go and get a lotto ticket I think. <laughs> Might hear a bit of car noise, we're filming amongst other things, the shed creaks. That's nice and clear, I can blow through that. That's how you want it. Good stuff. All right, now these bolts here that hold the manifold on, there's one here, I think there's 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Now, there's no nut up here. All the rest aren't bad though. So I'm going to cheat here. Here's my little Makita. Make sure we're going the right way. Okay, we're going to have to break a couple of these first, I think. Before we just bugger everything up. This ratchet I'm using is a snap-on bent head ratchet and they are the handiest thing they've got a nice long handle that's my go-to that's my favorite you probably just about got to sell the farm to buy one i can't remember what it cost but 
being snap on. It's good quality, but you will be paying for it. Often these nuts are brass. If they're not, they should be. Now uh, that's steel. So I do like, you can see the silver shine on it. I do like to put brass back. But look, not that these are hard to get, are they? I might do them a little later. You'll see a few shadows to get the to get it so you can see I've got big LED lights behind the camera there. So probably a shorter socket would work just as well under here. Give me a straight run. These two we won't be able to do like this. And we'll get a 916 spanner. I'll undo these and then we'll come back, back again. I've undone the hard to get out bolts through here and there's our manifold coming off now you can see where it's been all all balls up in through here we're not going to use this again I do have a spare so I can get rid of that take him out of the way now it's always interesting to have a look in the ports once you get this far and this is exhaust. I oh, will start at the front, I suppose. Exhaust, inlet, inlet. That's got a bit of a, a bit of a mark there, where it looks like something might have come through at one time. Just a little mark near the gasket. So we have exhaust, inlet, inlet, exhaust, exhaust, inlet, inlet, exhaust. So being a four-cylinder engine, that's that has a little paper. Oh, it's not really paper. It's got a it's got a metal a metal backing in it, metal base. When you buy these gaskets, I'll actually put them in the um, description, and you buy them as a pair. There we go. So when you buy the gaskets here, yeah, you normally buy them as a pair of gaskets. The front and back gaskets are exactly the same. They double up on each other, so no troubles. All right. At this stage now, we still have coolant in the system, so I usually like to try and get the coolant out fairly early, and I also like to drain the engine oil fairly early. And the reason behind doing that is it lets everything dry up in the head here a bit by the time you get there. Um, you haven't got coolant, you know, it's just gone. And to do the coolant, there's a tap on the side of the block here, but I find they're often blocked up. And so I choose to normally, oh, if I can find the... Find the flats on that. Oh. No, we might bugger that if we if we persist. No. I'll leave that alone, I'll wreck it otherwise. I'll drop the bottom radiator hose and I'll put a pot under. And all I'm going to do for the moment underneath is I'm just going to put a pot under the sump, drop the sump plug, catch the oil, and we'll let the radiator drain while we do this. 
it's late in the evening, late in the afternoon now, so in my instance here doing this tractor, um, uh, by the time I get back to it in the morning or tomorrow, um, the oil sort of drained away from the engine a bit and things like that. So I'll go and do that and I'll, I'll come back. Back on the other side of the tractor now, I'm sitting on the left hand side, you're looking from the right hand side where we took the manifold off. I've undone the bottom radiator hose and let the coolant out and what I like to do now, this is just me, the order of things, I like to get inside here and have a look. So we'll just pop this tappet cover off, a half inch spanner, half inch UNF bits, or UNF, half inch AF spanner bits. Now we're going to do this whole engine up. If we we're just doing a head or something like that, we'd be cleaning all this up and giving it a big bath and all that. But the, for this exercise, we're going to do the whole lot, so we're not going to get too fussed. Now, I think this has been glued on by the feel of all that. So I'll see if I can cut okay, it. Okay, we'll back. give this a bit of a bit of a hit. That's on quite tight. And there's our rocker gear. Now, can you see this here? That gunk there. That's a sign. In the cylinder head here, there's a, there's a poured alloy plug in here. And it actually has a, I think it's a three quarter BSP thread, British Standard Pipe thread put in there. And I might just come and lift the camera up and give you a look straight down so you know what to look at. Now that there. Now it's right in the middle of the cylinder head and that's that alloy. Now, for it to be mushrooming up like that, there's a chance that there's a little bit of coolant coming through there. Um, at the very least, it's, it's oxidising badly, so we'll drop back in in a little while and have a look at that. But I'd say once we're doing the cylinder head, once we've got the cylinder head off, um, yeah, we'll have a good look at that and see. That's something to look out for anyway. So we'll come back around the other side. Now I've had show and tell. Now I still have the spark plugs out of this engine. So there's a few things. There's a bit of silicon sitting up here where someone's had some silicon in there one time. Now we have a look and just check. We seem to have plenty of valve clearance. Look at the clearance on that. So that can be a sign of either a worn cam, a crook lifter, a bent push rod. Um, at this stage you can turn the loose push rods and just see if they're bent or not. Um, what you also do here, look at the clearance on that one as well. Unbelievable. I don't know when this had the tapas <laughs> done last. God, that's an eighth of an inch. Oh, it's a bloody long way anyway. So, but with that, we best just check. So if we push that valve down. That's coming back home okay. Okay, they all seem to be moving, going no worries. And another thing we look at now is on the top of the rockers, just check that you have a similar amount, amount of thread coming out of each one. So, you know, we have two or three threads. Now, what I like to do now is a lot of times over the years, these rockers, when they get adjusted, they get over tightened. And so I often like to pop a spanner on now and just make sure that the thread moves easy. See, that moves quite nicely. And the reason I do that now is we don't want to go waiting until we put the cylinder head on 
and go to adjust the rockers and then we find out that these are all stripped and all over the countryside so that's nice and free hasn't been hasn't been damaged that I'm aware of another thing it does too it takes a little bit of stress off the valves you know off the rocker gear when we go to undo that That's nice too. Hmm, so it's all going pretty well. That's nice and free too. The threads get really the or they get over tightened, and these these threads here, the the male threads. That's a very hard bolt, and they actually break the threads on the bolt. And, but you can often feel it when you go to adjust a valve later on, you can feel it. So. But yeah, some of these valves, I don't know that they would have been opening an awful lot. Now, normal, normally through your normal wear and tear of your engine, as the valve comes up into the head as it sits in the seat it sort of mushrooms and it gets lower and lower into the seat which means it comes higher and higher through the head so you often lose a little bit of valve clearance you know a valve can ride high um, in this instance it's way the other way look it's no big deal for what we're doing now we get a 916 spanner here and loosen the rocker gear off now, sometimes the studs come and sometimes they don't. It doesn't matter. The, um, if the studs come, well, we just put them back in. There's one coming. No big deal. We can put that stud in the vise later. And we take the nut off while it's in the vise. And on assembly, we put the studs in and bring the rocker gear down over the top. So ideally, the studs stay, but look, it just doesn't matter. Not worth getting too worried about anyway. Now, this is just something I do, but all the bolts from now on, from under the rocker gear, I always like to put in the rocker cover. And look, it's just a habit I've had for years, so I'm just going to stay with that. There's our rocker. Now, there's a little hole at the back there. That's how the oil comes up through the cylinder head up that hole and that lubricates the rockers. Now another thing we look for now, and I have a little bit of rag here that I can wipe it up and probably give you a bit of a look, is over the years with these valves or these rockers hitting on the valves, sometimes they get quite dished inside here and that can be another reason for you know, very loose valve clearances with old dirty old oil so those back two they're not the best but we'll radius them up they'll be fine when we come back to putting them back together now the push rods some people say keep them in the same hole i don't believe that um, if we're going to set the valves and do the whole show properly anyway what's it matter so you look at the push rods make sure they're not bent but later on, we have a look later on, we roll them down a bit of wood. We have a piece of pine or something like that, and we just roll them along, and that gives us a good indication. That's bent. Can you see the... So we don't know what's happened with that one. That one looks okay. That one looks okay. Now if you're ordering push rods from a wrecker, over the years these cylinder heads changed thickness, so you have to order the correct length. So you need to measure your push rods.
looks like only the one bent one. We don't need to deal with that just at the moment. Um, we will have time to do that while we're servicing the head and all that sort of thing. So up on the top here, now we have a little rod. Now this rod through here, that's the top support for your radiator. So I'll get the side cutters and I'll just pop this split pin out. I usually walk around the tractor, you know, this side, that side. And <laughs> but anyway, doing what we're doing, um, I'm, I'm limited to one side today, so I'm a bit this tacky in today. Here is your throttle rod. Now, what we do with that is loosen these U bolt, this U bolt here off, because we actually need to get the thermostat housing out the front of this rod. And we can do the job with this rod staying there once we get there. But when you go to idle, you go to idle your tractor, this, the hook in here that goes onto your thermostat housing, that just sits up and just touches the bottom rod there. And it won't be hard to see where it goes there. So another exercise on doing a um, Governor up probably wouldn't hurt with it. This little rod here, he goes, this is the governor arm. And it goes down onto the governor arm. These often pop off. You can often just... No, this one's still... Yeah, there we go. And you can see this, <laughs> this has been wired on. So they do wear, and the ball here wears. You can buy um, th this little end here. It is adjustable, and you can unscrew that. And... Sometimes I put a more modern one on and, and change the thread in the housing there. So whether you want to do that or not, entirely up to you. There we go. That's sitting up there okay. I'll see if I can unhook this spring. And there's the wire that was holding the ball in position. So she must have done some work, this old girl. Oh, it feels a bit stuck on there. Just give it a bit of a bump. And you can see a mark there where the U bolt was. So Polish that up a little bit, won't we? <laughs> little fight us to the last. That's a little housing, little U bolt. I'll take this bypass hose out of the way. You may be able to see up there now. See all the junk up in there? Poor old thing. 
And that bypass, I'll bring you around there later and show you that bypass on the water pump is completely closed off. This has had no temperature gauge on this. Um, the temperature gauge often comes in the right hand, left hand side here. You can hear a few cars going past. The road's fairly busy this afternoon for some reason. Must be something going on. By getting this housing here off, that way I can work with this bolt once I get out in the open a little bit. And I suppose, look, I could have always taken the radiator off, but from here it's only two bolts and we probably will do that. Um, with the water pump being bolted to the head, I find it easier to pop out the, pop the water pump out of the front of the housing. One bolt. Fighting it all the way. Look at the colour of the thread on there. Okay, we'll go handheld just for a moment. It's the next morning. I had to give up filming yesterday. The, there was young fellas up the road pulling wheelies and <laughs> there was, the neighbour started rider mowing and it just got too noisy to film. But um, This thermostat housing, that broke undoing the bolt. It gets, they get all chewed out around here. No big deal. They're an aluminium housing anyway, and at the age the tractors are, they're often not much good. I'll bring you around the other side, and that's a look down the thermostat, where the thermostat would normally go, <laughs> and that's chockers. This is where your bypass hose goes. That's chockers. And... Oh, we're not looking too bad up there. So this is certainly going to take some tidying up. So what we're going to do now is, because the water pump's bolted We have a couple here. of bolts here. One, two, three, four. And if I can get in and show you them, yep. And we could loosen it off the front here and just slide that forward. But look, we're going to do the full engine rebuild, so what I'm going to do, I've loosened off the bottom radiator bolts here. There's one here. Then there's one here. And for ease of filming and for ease of um, getting around and, and getting organised, I'm just putting the camera back here while I'm talking to you and getting organised again, I'm going to take the radiator off now. So we'll get rid of the radiator and that should give us a reasonably clear picture of what to do. So, okay, stay tuned. so after, after this alloy, you can still see the alloy sitting here around the thermostat housing. There's a piece of it there. That's how easy it is to break. So this just comes off the throttle rod here and we'll have to go through setting that up again but yeah look that's that's toast this here is where the temperature gauge would normally go and so we're going to have quite a lot of cleaning that's what happens when you put dam water in yeah there's a bit of calcium comes in with the dam water a bit of soil residue and it um it all chocks up like that okay well we've undone the radiator so I should be able to, we have the top hose off, the bottom hose is how we drained the engine. So I'll lift that out of now the Now that way. gives us a little bit of access round the front here. And it gives us an access to these bolts. Um, there's three bolts here that I can probably just pop the water pump out the front. And I'll loosen the generator um, belt adjustment off there. That looks like a bit of a homemade set up there as well so we'll probably have to fix that looks like the original bolt down here has been broken off so we'll have a look at that so look I'll, I'll loosen the generator and I'll get ready to pop the water pump off 
then all we have to do is run around the head bolts and we can lift that head off out of the way. Sorry about that. There's one water pump out of the way. We'll revisit that slightly later. Now I'll pick the camera up here. Get rid of that. And now we can undo the bolts that hold the cylinder head on and I'll go around that side again and that way you can see more than just the long view. Okay we've shifted the camera you're on the right hand side again the exhaust side and we have one two three four five nuts to undo outside the tappet cover and we have one two three four five to do under the tappet cover. Now once again with these if the studs come out don't be too concerned we're going to pull all the studs out later anyway so for this job and uh, try and shorten the video up boy they get long i'm just going to use my makita nut gun It's an 11 16 socket. So on that one we have a bed each way. First one the stud came, it has a washer under it. Not stuck up in there, we won't worry. And we have a bolt. I'll just try and get that nut out of there if I can. And like I said before, all, everything that comes off the head or from under the tappet cover, I try and put in the tappet cover, in the rocker cover. Whoop. Getting a bit excited there, Lee. Quite a bit stuck. And these ones should be a bit easier. The order that you undo them doesn't matter. Right, so now we've got all the nuts undone. We have studs here, a stud come out here, one came out there, and one came out there. We should be okay to lift the cylinder head off and I'll just check that we have nothing else hooked up anywhere. No, and you can see it's starting to come loose, there's a little bit of water coming there so that head will probably lift off reasonably easy. We'll see, look at that. The head gasket came off with us, so that's okay. Now, what's the gasket look like? 
doesn't look to be blown anywhere. We compression tested the engine so we knew it wasn't blown. But it's had a new head gasket at some stage. Looks okay. Now, look at the oil here. A lot of oil. A lot of oil in there. Oil there. And this valve here, you can see that valve sits way down compared with this one. This one had really good compression. This valve was way down compared with that one. But anyway, so that's there we go. That's going to be the end of the video for taking the cylinder head off. And it's just part of the whole job. Now, we still have a little bit of water in the gallery here. This water gallery there is just full of rubbish. So we have a bit of a clean up to do. So that'll do, like I say, that will do for pulling the cylinder head off. We will strip the cylinder head and run through what we need to do, um, put the valves and the guides and if we need to put an insert in or something like that, we'll deal with that at the time. Um, the next part of this series will be, I'll probably get rid of these studs in the meantime, so I've got a nice flat surface here. But the next part of the series will be pulling the pistons out. So we'll have to run through popping the sump off and all that. But that's it for this one. Thanks for dropping by. Um, yeah, like, subscribe, watch a few ads, do all that sort of thing that helps us along with the channel. And we'll catch you next time, eh?